Why is green tea good for you? There are many compounds in tea that are good for your health, and in this episode, we're gonna find out what they are. We'll break down the components of the tea leaf to find the caffeine content of tea, the antioxidants in green tea, the L-theanine, and more. We'll also take a look at the volatile compounds in tea that create the broad spectrum of flavor profiles, everything from flowery to chocolatey. This video is just a small excerpt of our book, Secrets of Japanese Green Tea. The book contains 100 pages on everything we've learned after meeting with dozens of tea farmers around Japan in search of the best tea for neoteas.com. You can get the book for free for a limited time if you sign up using the link in the description. So the first important part of the chemical composition of green tea is the polyphenols. Polyphenols are the natural compounds in the tea plant that give the drink a lot of its trademark flavor. The term polyphenols includes smaller subgroups of flavonoids, phenolic acids, and tannins. The largest subgroup within the polyphenols are the flavonoids. The bitter or astringent flavors you get from a tea are likely from the presence of these flavonoids. It's believed that the flavonoids are the chemicals produced by a plant in order to defend itself against insects, bacteria, and fungus. Teas higher in polyphenols are going to be the unshaded sencha teas. You can identify these because they will have a lot less of a sweet flavor and more of a dry or bitter taste. If you want a sweeter green tea, go for a long shaded tea like Gyokuro, which will have a unique sweet and savory flavor. You can find a great selection of these Gyokuro teas on our website, and they come from Mr. Sakamoto, a legendary tea farmer in southern Japan. The teas are also extremely high in caffeine, which we're going to discuss later. Black teas will also be significantly lower in polyphenols because during the oxidation process, the plant converts these polyphenols into theoflavins. This is why black teas have warmer caramel or chocolatey flavors and green teas have this fresh and vibrant vegetal flavor. Next, we get into the more exciting topic, the antioxidants. One of the more talked about properties of the chemical composition of green tea is EGCG. EGCG, or epigallocatechin gallate, is one of the most important catechins in green tea. It's thought to have strong antioxidant effects on the body as it protects it from free radical damage. When researchers study the health effects of green tea, EGCG is one of the chemicals they examine. Studies have shown EGCG to help with everything from weight loss to heart health to cold and flu prevention. Tannins are often misunderstood in the world of tea. The word has historically been used to describe the agents in wood that are used to tan animal skins. However, they are in fact a subclass of bitter polyphenols. Although tannins do exist in tea, they are in a very small concentration and therefore do not contribute much to its overall taste. When you're describing the flavor of a tea, use the word catechins or polyphenols instead of tannins. Next, we have the enzymes. While the enzymes may not have much to do with the taste of the tea, they have everything to do with the tea's transition into an oolong or a black tea. The two main enzymes in the tea are oxidase and peroxidase. After the tea leaf is picked, the cells begin to break down and these enzymes are able to convert the polyphenols into theoflavins and theorubigans. This process turns the color of the leaf from green to brown, just like how an apple changes from yellow to brown after it's bitten and exposed to the air. I know you're probably interested in learning about the caffeine in green tea, but we still have a few more compounds to cover before we get there. The next is one of the most unique aspects of green tea, and that's L-theanine. When it comes to the flavor of a green tea, one of the most important parts of the chemical composition comes down to the amino acid profile. The most common amino acid in tea by far is L-theanine. This is actually a very rare amino acid in the plant kingdom as a whole. It was discovered in green tea as recently as 1949, and to this date, it has only been identified in three species of plant and fungus. Camellia sinensis, Ilex wayusa, and a species of bolete mushroom native to North America and Europe. L-theanine is thought to be responsible for the reported calm alert feeling that tea is famous for. It's thought to increase alpha brainwave activity, leading to a greater sense of relaxation and a way to decrease mental and physical stress. Probably the least talked about part of the chemical composition of green tea is the volatile compounds. Although these aren't talked about much, they are one of the most important parts when it comes to the flavor and the aroma of the tea. Primary volatiles are the chemical components emitted by plants when they are attacked or damaged. Secondary volatiles can be brought out of the tea plant during the production process. In the context of tea, they are responsible for these beautiful floral or nutty notes that you get from the tea. Here are a few that may be worth knowing. 
First, we have hexanol, which is responsible for the fruity and grassy flavors. Then we have hexenol, which is responsible for the herbaceous and woody flavors. Next, there's linalool, which gives the tea these floral, sweet, and woody flavors. We also have geraniol, which gives the tea the floral, rosy, or geranium flavors. Next, we have pentanol, which is responsible for these almond or malty flavors. And finally, we have benzenacetaldehyde, which is responsible for these hyacinth or lilac flavors and aroma. Finally, we come to the topic you've been waiting for, the caffeine and green tea. Before we talk about why the tea plant produces caffeine, if you're enjoying this video so far, it would really mean a lot to us if you could like this video and subscribe to see more tea videos in the future. So the tea plant produces caffeine as a natural insecticide to protect its leaves from insects. The younger, more tender sprouts of the tea plant are more vulnerable to insects, so they need to produce more caffeine. The older and more mature leaves at the base of the tea plant are tougher and less likely to be eaten by insects, so they produce less caffeine. This means that when the tea is made from older leaves, the chemical composition of the green tea will be different. Teas made from the older tea leaves will contain less caffeine, and teas produced with the younger tea leaves will have more caffeine, all else being equal. An example of this is a tea called bancha, which is high in minerals, low in caffeine, and it's very inexpensive. Another factor that can influence the amount of caffeine in tea is the ratio of stems to leaves. Because the stems of the tea plant contain only one third the caffeine of the leaves, teas that include stems like kukicha and katagane are gonna be much lower in caffeine. These teas contain as little as 18 milligrams of caffeine per cup, making them almost half as caffeinated as bancha and less than a quarter of the caffeine as a small cup of coffee. To reduce the caffeine content of a tea, you can also add some toasted rice to it. Because the rice itself doesn't contain any caffeine, it brings down the average caffeine content. Teas made with toasted rice are called genmaicha, and they are becoming a common way to enjoy tea without as much of the caffeine. A lot of genmaicha teas are also made from the older tea leaves as well, which reduces the caffeine content even further. Here you can expect to get 30 to 40 milligrams of caffeine per cup if you're using the same 5 grams of leaves. Did you find this guide helpful? You'll really like our book then. It contains information on everything from the history of green tea to how you can prepare the best cup of tea at home. If you want to get your copy absolutely free, you can click the link in the description and sign up. You'll also get 10% off on premium tea and teaware at neoteas.com. When you order tea from us, it really helps to support the incredible tea farmers we work with, and it helps to keep this channel going. Thank you all so much for your support, and we'll see you next time.